Hey friends, I'm Abby and I'm so excited that you could join us online for the first weekend of May. Grown-ups, make sure you take some photos and videos of today's lessons and the activities you do with them and share them on Facebook by tagging the Victory Kids Facebook page or you can even email them directly to your, camp your campus kids ministry director if you're not on Facebook. So, I have a question for you guys. I want you to show me a thumbs up if this describes you or a thumbs down if this is an area you're kind of still working on. Are you guys ready? Who is good at following directions? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Which one are you? Are you good at following directions? Or are you still working on it sometimes? Following directions can be really hard, especially when you know you should be following your parents' directions to clean your room, but you would really rather play a game or read a book or really do anything else other than clean your room. That was me. How can you tell if someone is good at following directions? I want you to shout it out or just talk about it with your family. Sometimes it can be hard to follow what we are told to do. Sometimes, if we don't quite understand what we're supposed to do, it makes us not want to follow the, the directions, right? It's hard. This week, we are starting a new series at Victory Kids called Go! We are supposed to go out into the world and tell others about Jesus. And do you know who gave us that mission? God did! That's why this week's big idea is God gave us a mission. Now, do what I do to help you remember the big idea. You guys ready? God gave us a mission. Okay, so let's do the motions one more time. God gave us a mission. That was awesome, guys. Do it one more time for your family, though. Great job. In a few minutes, my friend Pastor Jason is going to share today's Bible story with you. But before that, we are going to have a time of worship and we are going to be learning a new song. And it may be new to some of you or some of you may know it already. It's the perfect song to go along with this week's big idea. Listen closely to the words of this new song as you worship. Get ready to go. Episode four. Today, the song is Tell the World from our album, Tell the World. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that. All right, guys, we're going to teach you a song. It's called Tell the World because we want you to tell your friends about Jesus. Are you guys ready? Yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Don't want to stand here and shout your praise or walk away and forget your name. I'll stand for you, that's all I do, because there is none that compares to you. Now this part is really easy, all right? Isn't it easy, guys? Yes. So easy. So you go like this. All I want in this lifetime is you, with the other hand. And all I want in this whole world is you, you, you. OK, guys, we're going to go to the chorus now. It's pretty easy. Hey, guys. So easy. Yeah. So I need you to put your arm up like this, with your finger pointed up high, and we're going to pretend we're spinning a ball around on our finger like that. Yeah. Try it with the other hand. Very good. Let's give it a go with the words. What do you reckon? OK, yeah, let's go. Tell the world that Jesus lives. Tell the world that, tell the world that, tell the world that he died for them. Tell the world that he lives again. Woohoo! Now I've got to teach you the second verse, but it's really easy. A lot like the first. Do you reckon you guys can do it? Yeah. All right, here we go. No longer I, but Christ in me. It's the truth that sets me free. How could this world be a better place? By thy mercy and by thy grace. All right, we're going to learn another part of this, okay? Yeah. Are you guys ready? Yeah. It goes like this. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. And then we do it again. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. With the other hand. Now we're going to do it with both hands. Are you ready? Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. And one more time. Come on, come on, we'll tell the world about you. And one 
better place But by thy mercy, by thy grace Kiss all I want in this lifetime is you And all I want in this whole world is you, you, you Everybody now! Tell the world that Jesus lives Tell the world that, tell the world that Tell the world that he died for them Tell the world that he lives again Tell the world that Jesus lives Tell the world 
Hey guys, this month our series is called Go, and it's kind of like a super cool spy secret mission theme. So do you guys know that we have a mission? A mission that God gives us isn't just a mission. It even has its own name. It's called the Great Commission. That's a pretty big word. Does anybody know what it means? Those are some great answers, guys. It simply means that Jesus has given us something to do. We find the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. The mission was first given to Jesus' disciples, but it was meant for every follower of Jesus forever. So it's a mission for you and for me too. Let's read what it says in Matthew chapter 28. And then Jesus came to them and he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. You must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. You see, our mission is to tell others about Jesus. Many churches do mission work in all different countries all around the world. At Victory, we send teams all around the world to India, Cambodia, Eswatini in Africa, and Honduras, and other places even in the United States. Did you know that my family and I were missionaries in Kenya? Before God gave us our mission here at Victory, we were on a mission to minister to boys and girls in Kenya who didn't have parents. You see, the purpose of all of those mission trips, both for us and for Victory Church, is to share about Jesus to people who haven't heard about him yet. But the church missions are just one of the ways that we can show Jesus' love to our community and to the world. We can carry out God's mission right at home too. Let's take a deeper look at the Great Commission. So right now, I want you to pretend that you are like top secret agent spies. We're gonna put on the, on the screen the Great Commission. Now here's your mission. You're gonna read Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. And then you're gonna see if you can spy three action words in the Great Commission. There are three things that Jesus tells us to do. Are you ready? Go. Okay, did you guys spy three things that Jesus said to do? What were they? That's right, the words are go, baptize, and teach. Jesus says to go and make disciples, or followers of Jesus. Then he says to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the third thing he says is to teach them every to obey what God says. Now, let's watch this cool thing that helps us to understand our mission just a little bit more. Hey kids, have you ever been on a super important, super special mission? Like sneaking behind enemy lines to capture the flag, to bring your team to victory, or grabbing something from the pantry so your mom can make dinner. Well, today that's what we're talking about, the most important mission of all. It's called the Great Commission, and we first hear about it from Jesus in the book of Matthew. Let's take a look and see what it says. Jesus came and told his disciples, Go and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. Jesus said this to his disciples, but it's for us too. So let's see how we can complete our mission. Go make disciples. When Jesus died on the cross, he made a way for us to follow him, and so that we can be in heaven with him someday. And if you put your faith in him, that makes you a disciple. But Jesus wants everybody to be a disciple, so it's up to us to help him. And the best way to do that is to tell others about him. Tell them how much Jesus loves them, and that he died on the cross for them too. Then, hopefully, they'll start to follow Jesus too. Next, baptize them. See, once somebody puts their faith in Jesus, they're saved. That's it. There's nothing else they have to do. Jesus has done everything for them. But new disciples like to get baptized. 
because it shows everybody around them that they belong to Jesus now. It shows others that just like Jesus died and rose again, we go into the water and come back out, signifying our new life with Him. Last, teach them to obey Jesus. Now that someone is saved, they need to know how Jesus wants them to live their life. See, when we know what Jesus wants from us and we go do it, that's called obedience. And it's our job to help new disciples do that. Teach them about what the Bible says and show them how to do it in their lives. And that's the Great Commission. It wasn't just for the disciples, it was for all of us. And that's why it's our memory verse. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations. So next time you're on a super special, important mission, remember the most important mission of all, and go tell others about Jesus. Sometimes, telling people about Jesus might look like caring for them or showing them kindness, or it might look like noticing a need around us and being a big helper to people who need it. Can you think of some missions for Jesus that you can do. What do you think happens when we don't carry out God's mission? Let's read this Bible passage and find out. Romans chapter 10 and verse 14 and 15 says this, how can they call on him unless they believe in him? How can they believe in him unless they hear about him? How can they hear about him unless someone preaches to them? And how can anyone preach without being sent? It is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, how about that? It talks about pretty feet. This verse is actually saying that if we ignore God's mission, it affects a whole chain of events. If we don't go, people won't hear about Jesus. Because they haven't heard, they won't believe. And because they don't believe, they don't know that Jesus is the answer. There are a lot of things that get affected by our one decision. Verse 15 again says that, verse 15 says, and how can anyone preach without being sent? It is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Before we can go, someone needs to send us. Now who is sending us? Right, it's God. So when we choose to follow Jesus, we are sent by God to go out and tell the whole world about who Jesus is and what Jesus can do in our schools, in our families, in our neighborhoods, around the world, wherever we go. Now, I don't know about you, but this part about feet is pretty interesting. When I think of feet and the word beautiful, they don't usually come together. Just ask my wife, she loves my feet. Not really, don't believe that. But the Bible, ver the Bible verse is saying that um, we're de the feet that deliver the good news of Je about Jesus is so precious that even the person delivering the news and their feet are beautiful. That's how much people need to know about Jesus. That's how important our mission is. Now I want you to think about someone that you want to tell about Jesus this week. Is it a friend at school? Maybe you're connecting with them online. Maybe it's a family member. If you can't think of any run right now, that's okay. But pray and ask God to show you the people who need the good news delivered to them using your beautiful feet. Hey guys, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, so much for the opportunity to be together today online. Lord, I pray that the guys and girls today really understand the mission, the great commission that you have given to us to go into all the world around us and reach them for you. Lord, I pray that we would go and that we would make disciples and that we would teach them to obey the things that you have told us about in the Bible. And so Lord, I pray that you help us to live our lives for you and help us to also think of people that we need to tell about you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Hi there, you little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl, and welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. 
with your host, Carl, and your co-host, Cassie, where we learn, we have fun, talk about Jesus and all that the Bible has to offer. So once again, welcome to Grow TV. Here at Grow TV, anything can happen. Things can get loud. Hobba, 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 hobba. Things can get very quiet. Things can get silly. You're serious. Hello, Basil. Yes. Send the check immediately. <laughs> I'm serious. What I'm saying is anything can happen here at Grow TV. And someone can walk through that door right now. Hey, Carl. Ah! Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Good, because you didn't scare me. I don't get scared. <laughs> I'm tough. OK, well, I just wanted to give you this. What is this? I don't know. Who's it from? I don't know. Where'd you get it? I don't know. How did I it? I don't know. You didn't even let me finish. You're right. Sorry, go ahead. OK. How'd you get it? I don't know. <laughs> OK, well, thanks. So what does it say? It says go. Go? Hmm. Looks like there's something on the bottom too. Well, you're right. It says Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Interesting. I think that's a... Code. No, I don't think... Yes, that's exactly what it is. It's a code for some top secret mission. But what does it mean? Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Matthew, Matthew. Hmm, who's Matthew? Who's Matthew? How old is Matthew? Matthew, 28. And he could have eaten 16 to 20 something king bar sandwiches. That's it! Matthew was 28 and he ate 16 to 20 sandwiches that had peanut butter inside them. Case closed. <laughs> I'm the winner. I don't think that's right. Oh yeah? What do you think it is then? I mean, I thought it was obvious. It's a Bible verse, right? Bible verse? <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that does make sense. Yeah, Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Jesus gives the Great Commission. Commission, huh? It says, Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Whoa, 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 hold up. What did it just say? Nations? No, before that. Of all? Before that. Make disciples? Before that. And? No, before that. Go? Yes, go! That's what was on the paper! Oh, that's right. I'll keep reading for more clues. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you, always to the very end of the age. Wow, that is so cool! So what do you think this means? Well, I mean, I have so many ideas. Like, 500 million ideas. But what do you think? Maybe this verse is some type of an adventure. Some type of a test. Something like a... Mission! It's a mission! We're going on a mission! Why do you say that? Well, what's the title of the verses? The Great Commission? That's it! The Great Commission. The Great Go Mission. God wants us to go on a mission. Wow, that's exciting. God gave us a mission. Awesome. But what is it? What are we supposed to do? Well, in the verse it tells us to make disciples, teach them, and baptize them. That's a big mission. Yes, it is. But I think we can do it. I think so, too. Wait, <laughs> that's our big idea. Our big idea today is God gave us a mission. Now kids, I'm going to count down from five, and when we hit zero, I want everyone to yell out the big idea. Five, four, three, two, one. God gave us a mission! Woo! <laughs> Good job. Now I think it's time to start training and to get ready for our mission. Well kids, thanks for tuning in to Grow TV. I'm your host, Carl. And I'm Cassie. And we'll see you soon. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for that great lesson. Who else is ready to complete the mission God has given us? 
In just a second, you're going to see a list of discussion questions up on your screen. When they come up, go ahead and press pause on the video so that you can talk about the questions as a family. After you're done chatting, come on back and press play because we have one more thing to do together. How did your discussions go? We can't wait to hear about the family discussions you got to have as a family. But we have one more thing to do. Before we go, let's go over this month's memory verse. Our verse this month is Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, your mission should you choose to accept it is to say the memory verse like you're underwater. And this is gonna be really, really funny. Like I feel really funny doing this. So to do this, you just run your finger up and down on your lips while saying the verse. It looks and sounds like this. Ready to go? It's really silly. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Who else felt a little bit crazy doing that? Grownups, I hope you got some good video of that. Share it with us on Facebook because that is way too fun not to share. Your next mission is to download the activity guide and continue with the fun from today's lesson. And remember, you don't have to do all the activities today. At our house, we sprinkle them in throughout the week to help us better remember our memory verse and Bible lesson. I hope you guys all have awesome days. Thank you so much for having fun with us today. Bye.